deep split, a township in the north of Johannesburg, which has a population of almost a million people. Um, majority of people living in deep split are low income earners. Life in deep split is hard. Um, not only from the fact that there's poor service delivery uh, for basic services like water and electricity, but spatially um, it is set up such that people have to get up very, very early um, to go to work and they come back very late. So life is, is really hard for the typical deep slurred resident. Added to that, the health care um, compounds the problem. There's not adequate access to basic health care services. There's a high prevalence of easily treatable diseases like TB and HIV with no access. There's only two public health clinics that don't have the necessary capacity to service the people. Um, and to add insult to injury, the closest referral hospital from Deep Sluit is plus minus 40 kilometers away. There's definitely a need for an urgent intervention. I grew up in a township in Springs. The township is called Guatema. I've always wanted to be a doctor. I've grown up in a family that has emphasized education. So I've had the privilege to work in both the public and the private sector and also the, the privilege to understand the challenges in both sectors. In the public sector, which is where I started after my community service, I was faced with the inefficiencies, um, the under-resourced and just the bad service that you get in the public service. My experience in the private sector were, were completely opposite to that of the private sector. It runs like a well-oiled machine, it's well-resourced, it's efficient, However, it's not accessible to, to everybody. It's only accessible to about 18% of South Africa's population. I'm, I'm a Christian and that has played a significant role in many decisions in my life, um, especially this one, to, to start this venture. This time last year, in 2015, um, on the 28th of July, my uncle died. And he had been ill for a month and going to the clinic complaining of fatigue, and they just gave him vitamin B tablets. Um, until he presented with shortness of breath and contacted me. But by the time that I intervened, because he lives quite far from me, um, he was at a stage where he was in quite bad heart failure and needed ICU intervention and subsequently died. And my life story thus far has therefore, uh, in a big way, influenced and contributed to me opening Quali Health um, and opening it with the urgency that I have. So the Quali Health model is really premised on three main pillars. Um, the first one being affordability. So we charge a 250 all-inclusive fee. It includes medication, it includes anything that that person would need to make them better. The second important pillar is convenience. These people work seven days a week, some of them. So we open eight to eight, um, seven days a week to ensure that we are available when people need the healthcare. Obviously the last thing is quality. And what ties all of these three pillars together is the use of technology. That's what enables us um, to have a high quality, convenient and affordable service. So this is our reception um, and this is a patient's first contact with Quali Health. So we basically register a patient's demographic data here and they remain on the system. From then on, the patient will then come to the nurse okay, and undergo a process that we call triage, which is basically where they give a basic medical history and they have their vital data recorded. From then on, the patient moves on to our cash office or a cash box, and this is where they pay. This is our consultation space. We've got a total of 13 consultation cubicles, and as you can see, it's got more of like a hospital emergency feel. And once the patient is done with consulting, their script is usually available through the system um, where they come to the dispensary, and the nurse at dispensary just basically hands them the medication. Looking back, the girl from a small town called Springs has come a long way. Um, I had dreams of just being a doctor, but now I'm living the dream of not being a doctor, but impacting lives um, and making a difference in people's lives. Um, some people call it many things, but I call it the voice of God. That has been a constant guide in my life. You realize you know, why everything that's happened to you has happened, because it's shaped you into who you are. And, and what you're currently doing. So I'm extremely grateful.